Okay, you often hear over here in Ireland people talking amongst themselves on social media about which one they prefer between Scraggy Bay IPA, which is just a straight up IPA, although I would argue it's an American old school IPA, uh, given the fact that it has such an American sort of piney bitterness, uh, grapefruit thing going on. It looks like it's a, an American hopped IPA, so why not call it a West Coast IPA? Um, 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 but they also uh, compare that one to and have their own preference between that one and this one, which is Crossroads. And the thing about this one is this one is called an American style IPA. So we're going to find out, put it to the test and see what the difference between those two beers is and uh, which one's best. Welcome back to Views on Brews. I am Brendan. It is flagship February here in 2021, and I am just getting back into drinking IPAs. This is a no nonsense, no frill, straight up review. We're going to get right into this beer right now and see what this Crossroads American style IPA is all about. Okay, this one's a bit heavier hitting than the Scraggy Bay. I think Scraggy Bay is 5.3%. This one, we'll check it in a minute. I think it's 6.2. I'm going to pour half of it to begin with. Take a look at that there. Yeah, this one is 6.2%. So it's more along the American style alcohol by volume profile as opposed to Scraggy Bay's 5.3 which is just a little bit lighter which is I guess why it's not Scraggy Bay is not called an American IPA but I still think it tastes just like one anyway. Uh, let's have a look at what this beer is all about. So Crossroads American style IPA it looks very similar uh, I would have to say in profile to Scraggy Bay. It has a slightly hazy complexion, um, perhaps a touch clearer, but it has that antique gold, although this has a twinge more malt character, I can see, just slightly, ever so slightly darker. Um, let's have a look now and see, does it tell me anything else on the can? This one actually is an interesting one. It was originally uh, named Road Trip, when brewed as a 20th birthday celebration of a McHughes's off licenses. They're a legendary independent chain of off licenses throughout Dublin selling, you know, champion and craft beer. Uh, yeah, so this one is Crossroads. It's our tribute to the men and women of the Donegal's diaspora who, like the McHughes's, um, or like the McHughes, sorry, uh, have made their mark on the wider world. So that's the little spiel on the back of it. Um, it does have a slightly less stable head, which is interesting. Oh, no, it does pipe up a little bit, but I can see there's, there's a slightly lower carbonation in this. It's slightly thicker bodied, which is uh, to be expected for the carbonation. Um, it has a slightly smaller head. It's one finger, whereas Scraggy Bear had two finger head on the top of it at least. So let's have a little look at the aroma profile on this American style IPA and see, do we get anything that's sl slightly different to Scraggy Bay? Interesting. Kind of has a sweet orangey, slightly marmalade. Hmm, interesting. It's kind of a muted, dulled down, um, paired back aroma on this one. A bit orangey, a little bit citrus, perhaps a little bit more stone fruit. Um, uh, so it is totally different on the nose. A little bit muted on the nose. Maybe the beer is cold. I will give it one more go. Sweet, a little bit candy-like. A bit more perhaps stone fruit, a bit more along the lines of stone fruity. It's a little bit more odoriferous is the way I would say. It. It's, it's pungent, but it's kept in check. So you're having to search for that pungency and that's just the level of hopping that's being put into this, I guess. 
Yeah, I'm gonna give it a taste now and see if I can work out more about this uh, beer. But it is definitely, it's not one that you smell from far away. You have to dig into it to really get to the essence of what the hop uh, aromas are. Therefore, that's building up the flavor along with what you taste on your taste buds. Let's give it a go. Cheers, Slancha, and uh, yeah, let's give Crossroads American Style IPA a quick run. Okay, so the carbonation is a little bit more stunted. There is a lot more sweetness to this beer. Uh, it's kind of like more balanced with sweetness um, than the last beer than Scraggy Bay was, let's say. It has a bit more stone fruit going on in this beer. Um, the, the hop character is slightly more muted than I think um, I remember it being. Let's get a bit more in the glass and see what we get. Yeah, it's a good bit more hazier now that I've poured the rest of it in. I wonder if there was a little bit of hop debris in the bottom there. Um, the head has come together a little bit better now. It's got a lot of citrus to it, um, but it's kind of like um, sweet grapefruit, a little, you know, heading towards pineapple, but not quite there. It feels like there's a bit of stone fruit going on there. Feels like there's a bit of melon going on in there, which is strange. Yeah, so it's slightly dank. Let's let's take a look at this. So we've got some like stone fruit. We've got some uh, we've got some like pine. We've got a, quite a bit of grapefruit going on in there, but it's kind of sweet. So that sweetness, when you combine it to the hop, sort of dulls down. It's that really sort of like strong multi backbone type of an IPA where, uh, you know, you start adding hops into that. Hops are, are, you know, aromatic and you add sweetness to that and it kind of, you know, draws down like a heavier flavor profile, which is why I say it's slightly dank, but it's not quite there. It's not like odoriferously or pungently so dank. Yeah, it ha it's got a level of sweetness to it and it has a level of restraint in the bitterness or the malt is keeping the bitterness in check. So the mouthfeel is oily. It's kind of, yeah, it's very lightly resinous on the mouthfeel. But it, it, it does have that oily sort of texture to it. Um, but the beerness is kind of clean. It just kind of drops away somewhere. It's kind of an interesting one. But it's again, it's another one of those go-to beers. Um, but it's it's totally unique in a sense of it's nothing like Scraggy Bay. Um, I would argue Scraggy Bay is a bit more uh, West Coast than this. Um, but this is kind of you know, you know, it's kind of along the sixty sort of seventy IBU range as well. Maybe, maybe a little bit more. I mean, the more you drink it, the more it builds on you, but it's kind of slightly more dank than it is like strong, you know, bitter bitterness, you know, if you get my meaning. Yeah, it's a lovely beer. It's an absolute uh, classic. Um, for me, um, I'm Scraggy Bay all the way. This one for me is kind of like a tamer version or just a a more a muted version due to the amount of malt that's going on in the beer. I think it has an effect on um, keeping the hop character in check. Whereas the lighter malt, 5.3%, uh, um, uh, so-called IPA IPA, as opposed to West Coast IPA, feels more like a West Coast IPA to me because they get more of that heavy bitterness and tropical fruit, American sort of sea hop type of punchiness to it. Um, it's gonna be, um, I love them both. I really, really, really like them both. I'm so glad that all of these uh, core range from Kinnegar, um, uh, people are just 
I'm picking them up left, right, and center. They're selling so well. This one's 6.2%, but I quite happily drink um, Scraggy Bay at 5.3. It's going to be, for me, out of the two, I would love Scraggy Bay more so than the other, but I don't even want to pit them up against each other like that because I absolutely love this as well. I'd have a pint of one and I'd have a pint of the other straight after it. So have you tried uh, Crossroads uh, American style IPA recently? What did you think about it? Do you think that they should change the recipe and make it a little bit more tropical fruity, a little bit more you know, in one specific direction, a little bit more resinous, maybe a bit more piney, or maybe a bit more citrus, or just going off in one specific direction, more than kind of like a general um, hoppiness and a general bitterness and a general sort of flavor profile of the hops. Let me know in the comments below, and I think that's gonna do it. That's gonna wrap it up for me. Um, a lovely beer, an incredible brewery. It's flagship February. I'm gonna go with as many flagship beers as I can get my hands on. I'm also gonna throw in some curveballs, some completely non-flagship beers. But anyway, uh, enough waffle. It's on to the next one. Cheers, Slauncher, and bye-bye.